Robert Pondicio taught fifth grade in the Bronx. He's now a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. We're glad to have you, sir. Thank you. Why don't you quit teaching? Uh, wow. Um, I used to say that teaching is the easiest job in the world to do badly uh, and the hardest job in the world to do well. And, and this wasn't even counting some of the factors that you just described in, in, in that lead up. Um, you know, and, and after five years, I mean, I signed up for two years. I taught for five. And I remember thinking to myself after five years, because it was such a challenging job, I, I remember thinking I'd become the person that I signed up to replace. Um, it is a damn hard job. Forgive my language. Such has been made about the pay. There was a piece in the Washington Post uh, by Daniel Pink. Uh, why not pay teachers $100,000 a year? One mark of a winning idea, he writes, is that by offering something for everyone to hate, higher taxes would enrage conservatives, reduce job security for public employees, would infuriate liberals so far so good. We found with police uh, that higher pay does not lead to more recruitment numbers. There's something else happening that means people don't want to be a cop. Is that true for teachers as well? Yeah, it's, it's really challenging. I mean, nobody should begrudge teachers higher pay. On the other hand, uh, let's be blunt, you know, the American public school system uh, at large for the last 50 years has not crowned itself in glory. In other words, usually where there's higher pay, there's higher expectations. So the, the, the difficulties of the classroom environment notwithstanding, it's not like uh, we're seeing teachers knock it out of the park in terms of academic results. I mean, you know, we've had, you know, 50 years, I've said this for a long time, that, you know, the, the reading scores, the, there's, a, there's a test called NAEP, the National Assessment of Educational Progress, you know, the, the, the nation's report card, as it were. Well, for 50 years, it looks like a dead man's EKG. It's, it's hardly budged. So um, I, I'm all for paying teachers more, but I'm also, you know, in favor of, of, of wanting to see some results for that investment. Yeah, I know you've written a book, uh, How the Other Half Learns a Quality Excellence in the Battle Over School Choice, a quality being very different than equity, which is, I know is a point that you make. But I'm wondering if the, the issue here, when you tie the problem with teachers and police officers together, is not a, a different problem that, that is higher up in the, the, the tree in society, if you will. Um, and that uh, adults are being taught, right, you don't have to obey the law. Uh, therefore, it's pretty easy to understand why people don't want to be cops anymore. And at the same time, kids are being taught over and over, you don't have to obey the teacher, and people don't want to be teachers anymore. No, I, I think you're onto something there. I mean, uh, everything in education, there's, no, there's, there's nothing new under the sun. It's like a pendulum. Mm -hmm. Things go back and forth. And, and one of the things that swings back and forth is our attitudes as a profession about uh, school discipline. So you alluded to this in the lead up 20 years ago when Teach for America was the coolest thing for elite college graduates to do. We had a very different mindset about uh, about student discipline back then. There, were, there was a great fashion for these so-called no excuses schools with high discipline, school uniforms, lots of rules and regulations. Well, in the last couple of years, that's fallen out of fashion. Now you hear talk about restorative justice, the school to prison pipeline. You hear reports that say, look, when kids get suspended or dis disciplined, they tend to drop out. They tend to not persist in school. Um, you know, there, there's a acres of daylight in between these two extremes. But I think it's safe to say that right now mm -hmm. that pendulum is swung too far to, 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 to one side where schools are becoming increasingly unsafe. Look, no, no kid can learn in a chaotic environment. It's not just about violence. It's about, you know, are the conditions there, there for learning? Yeah. All of this. I, I know you study point. this at you study this a lot at AEI, and I think it's important because we hear so often from the teachers' unions and from others about how they're, they're looking out for minorities. We heard from the education department, uh, everything is about equity, on and on and on. And I think, and based on the title of your book and the work that you've done, that this teacher shortage really affects the poorest and disadvantaged kids the most. No question, no question. Um, I mean, you know, I, I taught in the South Bronx for several years. I taught in a Harlem charter school for on and off for years after that. Um, you know, the, the, the kids' home lives come into schools. It's that simple. Um, so when you're talking about kids who, through no fault of their own, you know, grow up under, under difficult circumstances, you know, broken homes, high crime neighborhoods, high poverty, et cetera, it's naive to think that those, those problems aren't going to manifest mm -hmm. themselves in, in classroom behavior.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.